Uh, hello guys, this is Andre. Welcome back to my channel about machine learning. Uh, today I'll uh, speak about um, having face uh, fine tuning with TensorFlow backend. And this example is based on my uh, actual project where I had a task to fine tune one of the having face models with custom data to run a sentiment analysis task. And uh, I'm not using uh, actual data from the project, but uh, I'll be using a sample set of um, uh, kind of um, data that was prepared by uh, Lawrence Moroni, a uh, well-known uh, instructor and um, uh, Google uh, TensorFlow machine learning advocate. So I'll be using data from his, uh, from his post. And this will be an example based on a sentiment classification. Uh, positive and negative, uh, where you would detect uh, if there is a sarcasm in, in the sentence or not. And uh, based on my results, uh, when you run this kind of classification uh, on hugging face model, you would get um, uh, by far better results than you would try to train the models from scratch uh, using LSTM uh, or other kind of network. Uh, the, the key strength of hugging phase is that you are using transfer learning. You, you are using model which is trained based on a large corpus of data and with fine tuning you can uh, inject your own data and uh, tailor the model to your needs. All right, so this is um, what we'll be talking today and actually not talking, uh, not only talking, I'll be showing you an actual example and you'll be able to run this example by yourself on the Google Colab. Uh, so let's start. And let me switch uh, to do my desktop. Uh, just a second. Okay, so here you see a uh, blog post, uh, which is po posted by me on Tower's Data Science about fine tuning high interface model. So, this is the exact steps I'll be showing you. And you can follow up and uh, go for the, from this article if you would, um, would like to get more information afterwards. I'll post a link to this uh, article uh, below the video. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that uh, the source code is being published on GitHub and you have a reference to a Google Colab notebook. So this is the Colab notebook that you could run. And yeah, the first step, you uh, turn transformers from hanging phase are not uh, by default included in uh, Google Colab sessions, so you need to install them. And uh, you should double check if you're running on GPU runtime, otherwise the uh, default runtime would be very slow for this task. So we have GPU, that's fine. So let's initiate the session and install transformers. Okay, let's give it um, a second or so. Okay, session is initialized. Now transformers are installing. It should be done. Okay, it's quick. And the next step is um, uh, we do imports. And in this case, I'm using TensorFlow backend. So for this reason, I'm using um, TF Distilberg for sequence classification uh, class. And this class is um, running with Distilberg uh, models. And distilled models are uh, optimized and they are smaller and lighter. So I, I prefer uh, to use distilled models. And um, also, Importing TensorFlow because I'll be fine tuning hiding face model with, with TensorFlow and Keras. So we do this inverse. And the next step, uh, we need to fetch data. And as I already mentioned, I'm using uh, data which uh, contains uh, sarcastic and not sarcastic sentences. And this data was uh, prepared and processed by Lawrence Moroni. Okay, so fetching data. And now we've got the data, and this is the, the, the helper code which uh, helps to um, process, to, to fetch the data and uh, uh, split it into the training and validation set. And we're using certain tra training size of 20,000 here. Okay, and now we can print out, and we can see that we get 20,000 records for training and uh, 6,709 records for validation. That's fine. Okay, so this is, the, this is how we split the data. 
Okay, in the next step, we actually want to get pre-trained model for the distilled bear based on keys, the one which we, uh, we, we will find him later, but uh, also we need to tokenize all our sentences. Because by default, uh, uh, you get uh, words and uh, machine learning cannot operate directly with words. You need to tokenize uh, and basically translate words to numbers, to array of numbers. So if you have a sentence, you'll get an array of, of numbers. And uh, here we uh, refer to training sentences and validation sentences. This is the arrays uh, with uh, original data. And we uh, wrap uh, those arrays with uh, tokenizer object. And then we want a convenient way to pass uh, uh, arrays of data to the TensorFlow. And for that reason, we are using a um, utility object from TensorFlow called dataset, and this uh, method called from Tensor Slices. And this method uh, basically uh, does all the job for you, uh, where you pass a dictionary of, of training encodings. Uh, encodings are translated, um, uh, basically, you translate sentences into numbers, so you get encodings. And with TF dataset, you uh, can uh, return object which uh, will have uh, references to uh, data and to the labels. So uh, then in, in, in one, you will have everything in single place and you could pass it quite conveniently to uh, TensorFlow feed function and run the training in this way. So here we reference to the encodings and to the labels. And we do the same for training data set and for validation data set. Uh, this operation takes uh, slightly longer uh, because uh, it takes time for data set utility to, uh, to prepare uh, data in correct form. Okay, it's completed. And now we need to get model. Uh, okay, so here. Uh, in the first step, we were getting tokenizer, and uh, with tokenizer, we are translating sentences to arrays of numbers. And uh, in this step, we get a model for this two bear based on keys. And we specify that we want to fine tune it for two labels. So our classification uh, will be on two labels, like zero and one. If you have multiple classification, you can specify uh, your number of labels here. And since we're running on TensorFlow backend, we're using TF class. So we, we get the model, and since this model is from this two um, group, uh, it gets quite fast, and the size is, is, is uh, way smaller than uh, later uh, model you would get from the hugging phase, in, uh, which would be in gigabytes or so. Okay, so we got the model, and uh, we could run classification directly now through this model, but we want to fine tune it, and we want to inject our data so that uh, model would be aware about our specific domain and would uh, run classification probably more in a more accurate way uh, instead of just using model out of the box. So using uh, Adam optimizer and compiling model uh, with uh, compute loss, and uh, uh, we specify accuracy metrics to, to track the, how well model trains. And uh, then we call model fit function. We provide our uh, train data set, which was prepared in this step. And validation data set is uh, provided as well and run just three epochs because uh, we do fine tuning. So we don't need to run too many epochs in this case. So we should get uh, pretty good accuracy quite fast. And we do shuffle and uh, we uh, uh, send uh, data in batches in the model fit function. So we execute model fit. And since we run on GPU, it will be quite fast, uh, several minutes. On CPU, it will be way longer. And we just need to wait uh, a bit and we'll get the result. And you can see that. Uh, Immediately, accuracy is uh, uh, even in the first um, iterations is quite good. It's, it's going uh, well and it goes above eight percent. And we'll see if by a third iteration, what accuracy will get. If we uh, would we get like around ninety percent or not? So let's wait a few minutes and uh, and check that. 
Okay, uh, now I can see that in a few minutes recorded uh, training completed. Fine. And we actually, even in the second step, we already got accuracy higher than 90%, uh, both on training and on validation. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's quite uh, exciting and uh, this, this is uh, very good. So now we've got a model and now we would like to save it because we would like to reuse it. And the way, there are multiple ways to save um, uh, Kinder, KRS TensorFlow model, but uh, if we are working with um, Hugging Face fine tune model, then uh, we should use model.save pre-trained function and specify a path for model will be saved. So we save the model and we could double check if uh, the model was actually saved uh, under the um, TMP folder. And here we, we, we see that the model is saved and this uh, H5 file is created and it's along with JSON file. And next we, just to, to show you, to simulate the, the process of loading the model, uh, if you would like to reuse the model next time, you uh, need to refer to TensorFlow uh, this to that uh, Plus, and you call front retrieved uh, method, and you point to the folder where model was saved initially. Right? So we load the model this way, and to test the model, we will not be using original model, but we'll be uh, using model which we loaded from uh, from this in this case. So we uh, got two sentences. One is uh, regular sentence, another one with sarcasm, and we'll check how the model. Uh, is able to detect sarcasm in this case. In order to pass uh, the sentence to predict function, we need to uh, encode it with tokenizer the same way like we do uh, for training and validation. So we're using the same tokenizer and then we call uh, predict function. Uh, Hanging face model doesn't return uh, directly uh, like 0 and 1, uh, so you cannot. Uh, uh, just say uh, from directly from the predict function result if uh, this is sample or not. We need to run softmax function uh, on top of uh, output return from predict and then you get um, a desired result. So in this case uh, uh, we were testing with sarcasm and uh, we see that we got the uh, uh, number uh, for uh, class one is uh, returns uh, uh, bigger probability. This means uh, the sentence comes with sarcasm. And if I check the sentence which is not without sarcasm and recalculate uh, predict function, and now we get higher probability for the first uh, index which is zero. So there is no sarcasm. And by the way, you want to check uh, predict input sentence which was originally tokenized by a tokenizer, so this is the output, you get uh, array of numbers. So that's all, and hopefully uh, this example um, will give you some uh, light how you could actually do, uh, how you can find your hiding face model. So thanks uh, for watching and if you get any uh, follow-up questions or any feedback, please uh, leave it in the comments. I will be happy to answer and get back to you. Uh, goodbye and see you soon in the next video. Bye.